Hey, Jason, I see you. I'm going to pull you in. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome. There he is. How's it going, Jason? Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. I can hear you a little quiet. Let me turn up my volume here. Great. Good afternoon. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. How are you feeling? Really well. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm really well. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining the call today. I'm excited to announce uh, the 30th uh, Thinking of Art Instagram Live. It's today, and we're featuring Jason Stein, who is the Director of the Modern Decorative Art and Design Department at Bonhams here in Los Angeles. Um, he has over 25 years of experience in the art world, and we're going to dive into design, and we're going to talk about uh, a sale coming up here um, at Bonhams on May 28th. It's the uh, part one, and then part two is June 4th. So with that, I just want to welcome everybody to the call. Jason, thank you for joining today, and get, talk a little bit about your background. I mean, you have so, such a diverse in, uh, background in the design world. Well... Gosh, I've been in the auction business, Kipton, for, I can't believe it, nearly 30 years. I uh, got in by pure chance. I had taken a, a college graduation trip to a small island in the, in the South Pacific, and there was a, a married couple in a hut next to where I was staying. Mm -hmm. and had about a week hanging out with these guys, sort of renting Jeeps, going to the jungle, hearing their stories about the auction business that they had mm -hmm. just left. Uh, uh, they were burned out, returning to Europe. And this guy, you know, I'm there just soaking up everything. I was trying to decide what I wanted to do really um, in the entertainment business. When I had taken that trip, right. I was a film major to start and then moved to communications and had interned in entertainment. I met mm -hmm. these guys and it was all over from that moment. I could only think of auctions. And so they had worked for Sotheby's house and suggested that I get in touch with a contact of theirs back in Los Angeles. And mm -hmm. rang her up, and I ended up being her intern. An uh, incredible woman who's now retired over at Sotheby's, and I stayed a little bit under a year. And mm -hmm. that was a decorative arts internship, then went to Butterfield and Butterfield, the very office where I work now. And Right, wow. 30 years um, later. 30 years later, uh, Bonhams, of course, acquired Butterfield's. But I, I was working, I was an intern in the furniture department at Butterfield and Butterfield, became their receiver and inventory controller for 15 different departments. Anything wow. really other than paintings, prints, and sculpture, but um, furniture and decorative arts, Asian art, rugs, antiquities, wine, you name it. So had a couple of years and just got immersed in the auction world, having never been in it before. Mm -hmm. And yeah, went from there on to running estate sales for Butterfields for the next four years and mm -hmm. did around 50 auctions in my mid to late twenties. And Amazing. by Christie's, and went to the to uh, Christie's Los Angeles to have an annual design sale, and then also mm -hmm. for all of the different decorative arts departments worldwide. So I was their gatekeeper in Los Angeles. Got transferred to New York, resigned, ended up at Bonhams, back in Los Angeles. Um, friends came together, helped get this job going, and I was in the design department of Bonhams Los Angeles and stayed Amazing. there, went back to Christie's for a few years, returned to Bonhams for a few years, went online for a few years at Padalate, yeah. a uh, sure. 
And were you left. in New York then when you were with uh, with Pali? No, I was in a lot in the arts district of downtown LA. Okay. Which, wow. which was fun. I had always been in this really traditional setting and all of a sudden I'm, you know, creating online sales when I never had really thought of things that way. And it was an incredible thing in 2013. So, yeah. you know, so that was amazing. Then went to a place called Viet, which is a, a resale site that got acquired by Sotheby's, now called Sotheby's Home. And mm -hmm. about um, two and a half, three years ago, I returned to Bonham's to run their design sales in Los Angeles. Amazing. So that's pretty much it. What an incredible uh, career you've had. I mean, there's, we have like a 30 minute conversation and I, there's so much that we could talk about, but um, I think the purpose of the call really is to highlight this, this sale that's coming up at Bonhams on May 28th. I mean, it's a two part sale. There's over 400 lots in this sale. So you've been working on it for what, five, six months or longer? Yeah, I think at this point it would be around seven months. I thought yeah. I'm gonna have about five months in between my sales to get it together. And it, this, this auction was meant to take place on March the 29th. But, you know, for all of yeah. us, our lives sort of changed, lives right, changed, you know, a couple of weeks prior to that. And so this auction went on hold. And as you said, around 400 lots. So it is, it's pretty huge. So uh, what we did was we took a, a view and decided to split it into a part one and part two and mm -hmm. are reducing it in sales that are coming up on May the 28th and June the 4th. Um, heavily, a little more heavily weighted on part one. It's maybe 225 lots in part one and then the remainder in part two. But it just mm -hmm. came at point that there would be a natural break between the two sections sure. and yeah that's that's how it's going it's going to be a live online auction which is going to be pretty exciting cool. so uh sort of a, have you done that have you guys done that before or is this the first time not the first time but we started doing it you know in in, in our current setting and right of course have been doing so well, uh, bidding, of course, from all over the world. And you could have the auctioneer in one room, phone the people who are doing phone bidding for bottoms in another space. We have our yeah. online auction aggregators within valuable.com, but it all comes together really seamlessly and beautifully. And we're, um, yeah, we're just seeing, uh, you know, great, great bidding. Yeah, there's there are so many pieces that um, I mean I want to talk about, but I, we narr I narrowed it down to a number of pieces. So uh, first, I wanted to ask you what what are your favorite pieces? Are there some favorite pieces that you have in the sale? Oh my gosh, um, so many favorite <laughs> favorites. Um, one, let's see, one lot that I love in in the auction is it's a group of Raymond Lowy ephemera. So these are pieces that I was shown by a, um, a family that, that had me over who mm -hmm. had a Raymond Lowy archive. And I got to, um, to choose from all the pieces that they had. The, these yeah. Raymond Lowy Palm Springs items were so cool because you have a group of Julia Shulman photographs that were taken of Louis's house in Palm Springs back in like 1946, 47. You have the project blueprints from Albert Frey, the architect of this house that we put in the lot. And then mm -hmm. so design notes from Raymond Lowy from his office in New York, all, you know, sort of rounding it out. And so mm -hmm. for anyone that is a Lowy fan, you know, the guy who created 
incredible logos, cars, ships, yeah. buses, spacecraft designs to people that are into architecture and or architectural photography. It all comes together in that lot mm -hmm. with incredible imagery. So beautiful. I love that. What year was that? Was, was that from the 40s? Yeah, it was 46. So, okay. yeah, I mean, you in Palm Springs, where the Lowy House was built, it was, you know, this great Frey House, and then you round the corner, and was the amazing Neutra House, the, the Kaufman House. And they're essentially mm -hmm. like that. Um, Lowy here, Kaufman there. And so just amazing things happening next to each other at that point in time in the desert. And I am, I love that. I worked What's on- What's the estimate of that piece? That piece you is- You know, off the top of your head? Bridge 3,500 for the group. Okay. Which is not bad. And I mean, just to, yeah, I mean, frame out the Schulman photos would be amazing. But then you have this incredible manuscript that you could read that goes with it or your plot, the project blueprints to totally yeah. nerd out. So yeah, that's certainly one favorite. I also love, we have these pieces by uh, June Schwartz. They're, mm -hmm. they're enamel and I am loving enamel these days. I, I, um, I just, I can't shake it. So whenever I see incredible works in enamel, especially June Schwartz, I, I absolutely nerd out. And there are two um, Schwartz lots in the sale. They're each around two to $3,000, really accessible in mm -hmm. an auction. I think that we had it was either one auction or two auctions ago in LA. I had a little box in mm -hmm. by um, Arthur Esmond Carpenter. It was a jewelry box. The top of it, though, was enameled by Schwartz. Uh, I'd seen these bo boxes go in auctions before, typically for around three to five thousand dollars. I put a three to five thousand dollar price on it, and it went maybe ten times. Oh the wow! Rank. Incredible record for Schwartz at auction. Wow! And so I'm really curious to see where these sort of bull vessels that we have will go in this sale. Yeah, I want to get back to some other items in the sale, but can you talk about the environment right now? I mean, for the from the auction house's perspective, obviously you've been doing online auctions and selling, you know, bidding online, but have you? Have you guys been kind of re, uh, relaunching or, or changing the, the strategic marketing around your online sales to nurture your client base during COVID? Yeah, well, well certainly. And, and we, I would say in response to the current environment with so many things, uh, you know, shifting to online, mm -hmm. sales, whether it is a purely online sale where there is bidding online or a live online event, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, our, our strategy has um, pivoted with it. Uh, really, I think we our marketing campaigns have certainly been enhanced. So, you know, there's so many different things that will go out. We we will have lots of emails, different blasts, things that we might not have done traditionally, but mm -hmm. the uh, the campaigns are huge at this point. Yeah, no, it's beautiful yeah. to see how everybody's changing. I was on a call yesterday um, and I was hearing, you know, they were talking about, you know, from David's Werner to the head of um, the Armory show. It was an observer call that they had on the art market and how things are changing. And, you know, it, it's, it's exciting. It's an exciting time, I think, for your business and, and our industry overall to see, you know, how we're going to convert sales. And um, yeah, it's just, I mean, the sale, the, the timing of what you've done, I think is really key too, because it's one of the only, is it the only modern uh, design sale that's launching at this time around the world? I think it is. I would say, yeah, right now it is. I've seen a few auctions mm -hmm. certainly since we've been all, you know, working from home, if you will. 
and mm -hmm. uh, maybe three or four really good sales that have taken place in other auction house settings. And yeah. since we are home, um, I think there are a lot of eyes on. And so we, yeah. we've seen just, you know, really solid results, whether it was at Bonhams or, or elsewhere. So, but I think What's mine the most is the one. Sure. What's the most expensive uh, item in the, in the sale? The most expensive piece I have is a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar chandelier by Dale Chifuli, and it is a massive piece, uh, maybe mm -hmm. twenty five hundred components or more, go go Amazing. into, and internally lit with um, different types of, I think it's uh, neon coloration. So mm -hmm. this was a private home which is pretty amazing. Oh, gorgeous. Great provenance. Yeah. So that's, um, that's the most expensive piece. So the prices would range anywhere from maybe a thousand dollar lot up to the you near know, the very top being 100 with the uh, Chihuly. Well, I think in going through the sale, there's furniture, there's objects, there's paint, there's painting, there's photography. Um, talk about the, the, the bowl, the Gertrude and Otto Natzler bowl with base you know the, oh, yeah. the backstory on that yeah the backstory on on this natzler is that well this came from someone i've known for years and years you know one of the the great collectors that every so often drops by the auction house and will will say you know i'm here to see you i have something that you know, that I think you'd like. And mm -hmm. he, he's seated there, you know, downstairs. I walk down and I, I look, and this is an amazing piece of Natsler, high and wide and the, the best kind of um, volcanic glaze you could find on one of these things. So mm -hmm. desirable, anyone that, is putting together, you know, a great ceramics collection or already has one would want this piece, especially, and, you know, someone into California design. It's, yeah, it's, you know, you should have. Yeah. What's, do you know the estimate on that one? I think I put it in for around five to seven thousand. Five to seven thousand. Okay. Yeah. Can we talk about the John Dickinson uh, dining room table? That's a gorgeous piece. Yeah, I love this piece. So the John Dickinson um, dining table was part of a, a private collection in San Francisco. The, the piece has been with the same owners since the 70s. And so it is, let's see, this is a 96 inch long table. And it's a table that was used as you know, the dining room piece, but it could be an incredible writing table as well. And mm -hmm. at SF MoMA, they, they have the actual blueprint, the drawing that Dickinson did of this, this table. It was gifted to them by the family that owned the table that I, that I got it from. So Amazing. it has incredible um, lineage. It is you know, a beautiful, you know, white table with this sort of faux quarried kind of edge. It, it, it's all sort of lacquered wood. But it has the feeling of, of rocks going around the- uh, Yeah, it looks like it's a granite or a marble table, but it's yeah, not. But it's, it's white wood. lacquered. Yeah. Wow, it's gorgeous. With, 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 it has like, these concealed drawers within the rocks, if you if you would. So on either oh, side, no on the long sides, you could store tons of things and you would never know. It. Beautiful, A little secret, little secret functional drawers there. and really totally unique in um, the Dickinson world. I've sold a lot of John Dickinson and have never come across one of these, these kind of tables. What's the estimate? And that, that I put it in for 15 to 25 and mm -hmm. you know, it was sort of 
just sort of deciding where, where do you, you think you should put it in at because there was no true comparable that exists. Yeah. Usually, yeah. you know, you're ones doing their research and you're, you're comparing apples to apples, but there was no apple here to... Uh, yeah. So I want to transition a little bit and I'd go back to some more pieces um, shortly, but talk about, um, sure. obviously, people think of art as an investment a lot of people don't think of furniture as an investment. So can you talk about that? And any key names that you think are really good value plays right now um, in the furniture world? Well, I mean, really, let's stay, I guess, with the Dickinson piece for a second. Okay. Because, you know, when we got this in, I contacted one of my collectors who she lives with beautiful pieces but she does buy for investment. Mm -hmm. And I knew this was something that, 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 she, that this person who has incredible art, great design would want if she could incorporate it into her interior. And mm -hmm. I think she already had a dining table that I had turned her on to from years ago. So yeah. it wouldn't swap out. But that this is a piece that, you know, potentially could it, be, it could be acquired that way. An, an amazing piece to live with that would have, you know, I, I would say value now and for the future. Mm -hmm. And, and there, can there you are talk like that. Sorry, sorry, Kipton. No, 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 it's okay. Um, so if somebody hasn't bought at auction before, you talk about the fees that are associated with that. So if they were to, to win the bid, say, you know, this is 15 to 20, say it goes on the high estimate at 20,000, what are other fees besides sales tax are they required to pay? Sure. So yeah, when you're bidding at auction, we always put a, a low estimate and a high estimate and they're a gauge of where, you know, similar pieces have gone in the past or where, you know, just based mm -hmm. on what we feel they'll, they'll go at. Um, mm -hmm. So you're bidding in the auction. Let's say it was the Dickinson table and it was in for 15 to 25,000. The auctioneer hammers it down at 25. What you would be um, planning on spending then really is the $25,000 hammer. Then there's buyer's premium that would go to, it goes to the auction house. And mm -hmm. that would be, it's, Let's see, these days around 27.5%, the first few thousand, then it goes down um, to, I think, 25 thereafter. So you're really, um, you know, just think about an, an additional maybe quarter on top mm -hmm. of the amount that you're spending and tax if it's applicable for you. If you're, you know, maybe in the trade, if you're an interior designer, you may not be paying that or a gallerist. But for the most part, right. most people would be paying tax and wherever they're from. Sure. Yeah. Um, and you also do appraisals, right? Part of your process as, you know, dealing with clients and sourcing these beautiful prod, you know, these products for the sales is to do appraisals, right? Is part, part of it? Can you talk about that? Yeah, it, it is part of it. So people contact me from really all over the world and they're uh, these days largely sending in photos. They're, they're emailing me, mm -hmm. they're texting photos, and we will, I'll get back to them. I'll give them a description of their piece, uh, you know, the, the maker who did it, the year it was done, a title if it's applicable, the materials that went into it, and a price. And if it's mm -hmm. an option value, it'll be, a, it'll be a low and a high estimate or there could be just one single fair market value. There are also insurance evaluations, mm -hmm. all sorts of different types of appraisals that happen, just depending on the needs of the collector. Yeah. So I wanna go back to some of the items in the sale. I've been dying to ask you about this, Ralph. Is it Becerra, the, oh, the, the head? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and if you guys were watching the stories promoting the call, this is one of the stories in the Instagram stories that I've uh, been promoting um, the call before we, we had it today. And it's the item, um, it's a portrait vessel piece. So can you talk about the size of that, the estimate and the backstory on this piece? 
Yeah, absolutely. So the Becerra is a 34 inch vessel. It is, it is a huge portrait head. So it is a sort of a bust, but, uh, but flattened. And mm -hmm. so Becerra was, he was a, you know, a California maker. He was the former head of, I think it was the arts program over at Otis uh, School of Design. About a year ago, we put in another Becerra piece and it was, you know, it was a beautiful item. It was maybe six to $8,000 kind of object sold for $40,000. And wow. I always loved Becerra, but it really, I mean, it was such a, um, an eye opener, just sort of looking at the immense interest in this man's work. So, I mean, he certainly was part of the studio ceramic world but his ornamentation, his, his kind of glazes and decoration was highly, um, highly patterned. Uh, mm -hmm. There, it sort of it was inspired sort of by, I would say, Asian uh, ceramics or even Persian. Uh, so, just incredible detail, and he always would use the this sort of geometry incredible colors, lots of little dots. And so on this mm -hmm. portrait of a man, the whole face is designed out almost like a, uh, a tribal tattoo, you know, if yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, good way to think about it. It's the cover, uh, by the way. What's, so, what are the materials? It's ceramic? Yeah, it's, it's, called whiteware so it's a it's a you know a glazed porcelain and okay it just it's 100 percent decorated in sort of every shade that you could think of it's like black white gold yellow red it ex mm -hmm. it's ex yeah and it came what's from he, oh, sorry yeah, where did it come from yeah where did it come from and what's the estimate so the estimate is 12 to eighteen thousand, and it came from really one of the great collections in the United States. It's um, the Grainer collection in, um, you know, from the East Coast. These were or are uh, collectors that, that started in, I think it was in British ceramics, and then they moved into American ceramics, different types of studio design, enamels as well. They had June Schwartz in their collection, who I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, and really um, incredible breadth and depth, uh, you know, in their collection. And we had sold a good portion of it at Bonhams New York, and we had designated another really good group for Bonhams Los Angeles. So this is the time that that group's coming out, mm -hmm. and the Becerra's part of it. Is that the only piece uh, by him in the sale? It is, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There'll be a lot of interest on that. What about the the cabinet, um, the Arlequin cabinet by Elizabeth Bruce Day? Oh yeah, so yeah, this this cabinet is, it, it's an incredible two-door cabinet that's sort of highly decorated with this super cool uh, geometric patterning. So you have two shades of blue up top, then it moves into mm -hmm. blue green and then squares of like powder blue and apple green. And it's on a, Funny. on a, like a really just great uh, gilt wrought iron uh, superstructure. So mm -hmm. gilt wrought iron sides, sort of geometric, um, gilt rod iron base and then up top are these enameled panels that pop in blue and green it's a super cool thing it's um around 18 to twenty five thousand dollars, and uh, you know Gerust was part of Gerust and Bonetti so this mm -hmm. is a uh, French uh, architect interior designer she's out on her own at this point but mm -hmm. was part of this 
highly, highly celebrated design team whose, you know, pieces of furniture in, are in tons of uh, museum collections. I think I went yeah. to a show their work at the Pompidou years ago on a, um, on a design study trip I had taken to Paris. So they're um, really popular and Garoust on her own is, um, she's great. And just really a, a showstopper, like this piece to have in the room just would make a room. You're constantly surrounded by beautiful things, but what, how, how have you managed not necessarily, are you inspecting, still inspecting these pieces as they're coming in? I mean, this sale you've been prepping for a long time, but what are, I mean, how has that process changed for you? So people are shipping things to the warehouse. You're having to go in and do the inspections. Can you talk about that process so people understand kind of all the due diligence that you're doing on these items? Right. So yeah, every single lot in the auction has a detailed condition report. So in mm -hmm. advance of sale, we have our eyes on. You, you do a full inspection. I'll have my flashlight out, black light, tape measure in case I see any condition issues. We're, mm -hmm. we're then either typing right into our computer system or uh, working with one of my colleagues and telling them what I'm seeing and they're getting in everything that I'm seeing. And mm -hmm. so when you're interested in a piece, you either can go on the Bonhams website and download the report because it's accessible to you or you just get in touch with my department and we email it over. So that's happening. And then also, you know, we show the, the piece, we, we show one single piece in, the, in a printed catalog, but online mm -hmm. we can show multiple views. So yeah. we're trying to show the piece at multiple perspectives as well as providing a report. So that's the sort of um, due diligence that's done in the reporting process. So you, you know exactly what you're going after, that there'll be no surprises. I always think of, you know, let's say I'm receiving the piece halfway around the world. And mm -hmm. I want to know as the buyer of that item in advance, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I, I want eyes on. And so that's how I look at it. Sure. No, that's great. It's great to, for people that, you know, are, a little shy about bidding online or intimidated through the process. I mean, you really have made it much easier and, and, you know, you provided the resources there online and access to your team, of course. Um, you talk about one of the paintings in the sale I noticed the retina painting that's in the June 4th sale. Um, that's a beautiful piece. There's a number of retinas, I think in the sale, but. Yeah, exactly. We, we have three retina lots in the, in the sale. So these retinas were part of really um, one, of, one of these incredible uh, Beverly Hills kind of estates that comes up for sale. And it mm -hmm. was an environment that was sort of super geometric, that the floors mm -hmm. were black and white marble that like formed in incredible configurations so you would walk down this amazing walkway that with this in this sort of alternating black and white thing going on you open the front doors and the ret two of the retinas would <laughs> you one on either side yeah. looking into this expansive view across los angeles just beyond mm -hmm. the so you're you're going through and it and the retina is just, you know, they welcome you in and they're they're so interesting. I mean, I love his style. That, they're big. What what are the dimensions? Sorry to interrupt you. There's no, one that's no, like no. 90, 96 by 64. I think that's one of the big ones. Right. And yeah. I think that estimate is what, 35 to 45,000. It is. And then there's, let's see, that was the the 35 to 45,000, yeah, 96 by 64. And actually there's another one that's 96 by 64 that's around 18 to 25,000. It's um, a little bit um, quieter. There's less calligraphy on that one. And then we have this mm -hmm. amazing cryptic 
that's in for 60 to 80 by retina. And that Amazing. was sort of the full master bedroom of the collector. And um, yeah, that, so that again, a black and white room with then pops of color that they would put in incredible pinks and yellows that would on occasion come out of the, the sort of black and whites that we had with yeah. the retina. What can we talk more about um, the investment side of, of investing in design? I mean, obviously, going back to buying paintings and, you know, you hear about the auction prices with with um, some major artists. Um, but you you don't I mean, the the mainstream kind of doesn't really understand how the design, you know, design objects and furniture are traded. So I want to talk a little bit more about that. And for you, if you don't mind and talk about certain names that you feel are undervalued right now, because you, you said enamel is something you're favoring and you're seeing a spike in, in different, you know, different artists that have done works with enamel. But for can sure. you talk about those that are really more undervalued and there's an opportunity for people to, to buy? Yeah, I mean, everything is pretty cyclical, right? So we, we do see all sorts of trends that, that, that happen. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, right now, let's see, I, I would say it's a good time to buy Sam Maloof. I don't have any in this sale, but I do in, in my September design auction. He was okay. one of the great California woodworkers known for his rocking chairs that have been in so many of the White Houses, uh, you know, mm -hmm. White House interiors of recent years, not this administration, but those past and mm -hmm. I have two of his rocking chairs coming up in Amazing. in September. The, the, those will be, you know, pieces to go after. You just go into sort of each um, collecting discipline. At the beginning mm -hmm. of this sale that I have right now in May, there's arts and crafts pottery. I think that's something to go after right now. When When I started whatever, 25, 30 years ago, arts and crafts was super hot. And it was huge in, let's just say Hollywood, in, in entertainment industry. And then there was, you know, interest that came in in mid-century design. So people got out of arts and crafts. And mm -hmm. so I see that there's now, you know, sort of a resurgence in interest there. But it hasn't fully peaked. I would go after that. So it, okay. there's Smart. so many different things and people are always welcome to ask me. Yeah, no, I think that's great. I mean, I think we've gone over a little bit on the time, but there, we covered so many highlights. It's really educational for people. And, you know, maybe we can do this again with another sale coming up because it's, it's uh, you know, the point of this is really to educate people about design with this call today. And um, good luck with the sale, May 28th is part one and June 4th is part two and it's on the Bonhams website. Um, and then I've, I've shared those stories on my account so you can follow the links to the sale as well. So Jason Stein, thank you so much for thank joining you. today. My and I'll pleasure. talk to you soon. Thanks for having me. All right, my talk friend. All right, of course. Talk to you soon.